Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing a review of Absent in the Spring by Agatha Christie. This is one of her Mary Westmacott books, which she wrote under the pseudonym. Um, a lot of people say they're like romance reads. I would say they're more like contemporary. They're just contemporary to the time they were written. Uh, this is one of the short ones, I think, as well. I'm going to read you the blurb. I'm going to go through and check out some of my tabs, and then I'll share my overall thoughts and rating at the end. So... Returning from a visit to her daughter in Iraq, Joan Scudamore finds herself unexpectedly alone and stranded in an isolated rest house by flooding of the railway track. This sudden solitude compels Joan to assess her life for the first time ever and face up to many of the truths about herself. Looking back over the years, Joan painfully re-examines her attitudes, relationships and actions and becomes increasingly uneasy about the person who is revealed to her. I like this line here, Blanche says, It's certainly simpler to make use of the shortest prayer that is known. And in answer to Joan's inquiring glance, she said abruptly, God be merciful to me, a sinner. That covers pretty well everything. So I like this little uh, exchange along here. Uh, by the way, I owe you £25. Never thought of it until this minute. Oh, don't bother about that. No fear. Blanche laughed. I suppose I meant to pay it back, but after all, if one ever does lend money to people, one knows quite well one will never see one's money again. So I haven't worried much. You were a good sport, Joan. That money was a godsend. One of the children had to have an operation, didn't he? So they thought. But it turned out not to be necessary after all. So he spent the money on a bender and got a roll-top desk for Tom as well. He'd had his eye on it for a long time. Moved by a sudden memory, Joan asked, Did he ever write his book on Warren Hastings? Blanche beamed at her. Fancy your remembering that? Yes, indeed, 120,000 words. Was it published? Of course not. After that, Tom started on a life of Benjamin Franklin. That was even worse. Funny taste, wasn't it? I mean, such dull people. If I wrote a life, it would be of someone like Cleopatra, some sexy piece, or Casanova, say, something spicy. Still, we can't all have the same ideas. We get a reference to someone wool gathering, which always makes me think of Charlie Heathcote here on Booktube. Joan thinks here, she says, men, she thought, would make sad messes of their lives if it weren't for women. Women had stability, a sense of reality. Although she's kind of a bit misguided because what she actually did was convinced this guy to throw away something he was passionate about to do something more practical. So we get this rather troubling exchange here. Uh, you know, you're the sort of woman who ought to be raped. It might do you good. And while she had stood speechless... And while she had stood speechless with anger and astonishment, he had added cheerfully... And while she had stood speechless with anger and astonishment, he had added cheerfully, I'd rather like to rape you myself and see if you look the least bit different afterwards. And Joan, of course, thinks time means nothing to these Orientals. And uh, anyway, she gets stuck in the desert. She uh, runs out of all of her writing equipment, so she runs out of ink and paper. She finishes reading a book, and she starts to dwell on her past a lot, and she thinks about when one of her servants left. Uh, Always been told when a thing's wrong, Mom, and never a word of praise when it's right. Well, it takes the heart out of you. She had answered coldly, Surely you realise, Cook, that if nothing is said, it is because everything is all right and perfectly satisfactory. That may be, ma'am, but it's disheartening. After all, I'm a human being, and I did take a lot of trouble over that Spanish ragu you asked for, though it was a lot of trouble, and I'm not one that cares for made-up dishes myself. It was quite excellent, Cook. Yes, ma'am. I thought it must have been as you finished it all in the dining room, but nothing was said. Joan said impatiently, Don't you think you're being rather silly? After all, you're engaged to do the cooking at a very good salary. Oh, the wages are quite satisfactory, ma'am. And therefore, the understanding is that you are a sufficiently good cook. If anything is not satisfactory, I mention it. You do indeed, ma'am. And apparently you resent that fact. It's not that, ma'am, but I think we'd best say no more about it and I'll leave at the end of my month. And here we get this little bit. Everybody thought Joan was afraid of cancer. They flinched away from the word. They called it, if possible, something else. A malignant growth, a serious operation, an incurable complaint, something internal. Even Rodney didn't like the mention of it. Because after all, one never knew. One in every 12, wasn't it, died of it. And it often seemed to attack the healthiest people. People who had never had anything else the matter with them. I think it's more than one in 12. Maybe it was one in 12 back then. We got this little bit, um, no, I stay a night in Istanbul and then I go to Vienna. She added carelessly, It is possible that I shall die there, but perhaps not. Do you mean, Joan hesitated, bewildered, that you've had a premonition? Ah, no, Sasha burst out laughing. No, it, it's not like that, typo. It is an operation I am going to have there, a very serious operation. Not very often is it that it succeeds, but they are good surgeons in Vienna. 
This one to whom I am going, he is very clever, a Jew. I have always said that it would be stupid to annihilate all the Jews in Europe. They are clever surgeons and doctors, yes, and they are clever artistically too. If you say so, then we get this um, sort of forward-looking bit, I guess. Uh, yeah, first published 1944, so written before then, so it was written with the knowledge of what was to come. But um, Joan said earnestly, but I have friends who have been in Germany a good deal, and they think that there is a lot to be said for the Nazi movement. Oh la la, cried Sasha, see if they say that in three years' time. Let me get this. Um, Av Avril was saying in her cool voice, Edward has got it into his head that there's bound to be war with Germany one day. Joan roused herself. That's what a woman on the train said. She seemed quite certain about it. She was rather an important person and she really seemed to know what she was talking about. I can't believe it. Hitler would never dare to go to war. Avril said thoughtfully, oh, I don't know. Nobody wants war, darling. Well, people sometimes get what they don't want. Jones said decidedly, I think all this talk of it is very dangerous. It puts ideas into people's heads. And then we get, um, just in the epilogue, this mention of a mother who like never hides anything from her kids. And it says, and it was Leslie's idea he saw that they should share. She, although she loved them, would not shrink from placing a portion of her burden on those small and trained backs. Not unselfishly, not to ease her own load, but because she did not want to deny them even the smallest, most endurable part of reality. So yeah, overall I thought there were some really beautifully written parts in this, and I did quite enjoy the story. I think I enjoyed it more than most of the other uh, Wes McCotts that I've, I've read anyway. I gave it a 3.5 out of 5. I would say if you've read all of Agatha Christie, or if you've really enjoyed Christie and you want to see some more of her stuff but in a different style, this is probably the best of the Wes McCott books to start with. So yeah, there we have it. That's what I made of Absent in the Spring by Agatha Christie writing as Mary Where there, but so there we have it. That's what I made of Absent in the Spring by Agatha Christie writing as Mary Westmacott. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read this one and if so, what you thought of it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more. And I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye bye.